I'm Barry Farber, and this is Diamonds in the Rough. I've got a special show. We've got the Dick Clark of country music, the Johnny Carson of cable. He's interviewed nearly every country music artist, past and present, as well as Presidents Clinton and Bush. He's the best-selling author of two autobiographies and recently published The View from Nashville. Country music icon Ralph Emery joins me. Don't go away. Diamonds in the Rough is brought to you by Custom Cleaner, home dry cleaning kit. Thanks for joining us. I'm Barry Farber, and my guest is country music. Uh, he's a legend. He's the host of, uh, television host, a best-selling author, uh, Ralph Emery, and it's terrific. Welcome to the show. Hey, Barry. Thank Hello. you very much. It's my pleasure. Uh, let's start off with this. Uh, I'm impressed with just not only all the people you've interviewed and all the success you've had, but what did you get from that experience with interviewing all those people? Tell me about that experience. Well, I have uh, a great curiosity, in some cases, informed curiosity. But if you've done something wonderful, I want to, I really want to know how you did it. And uh, as a result, I have run across uh, so many success stories. Uh, so many of, of the uh, people who became big stars in country music were child were children of the depression and they and they couldn't go to school because their the family was too big and there wasn't enough money. Now you know today, and a lot of them didn't go to college, but today, most of the kids who come there have been to college. What does that teach people? Becoming, coming from the Depression and that kind of adversity then, do you think there's a lesson? Yeah, I do. I think uh, the will to survive. Boy, that's, a, that's strong. If you have the will to survive. Uh, there was no comic at the Grand Ole Opry name. They called him the Duke of Paducah, Whitey Ford. I'm sure many people remember him, mm -hmm. and we were, and he was, he had evolved out of vaudeville, mm -hmm. and we were talking about what it takes to become a success, and he said, well, I think perseverance. Perseverance is worth more than money. It's worth more than talent, and it's more than it's worth more than anything else you can think of. Now, I don't know whether I totally agree with that. I, I agree with most of it. If you have talent, sometimes a lazy guy with a lot of talent can, can make it, but that's kind of rare. You need, you need awfully good management. You know, they did a study, Harvard did a study of all these people who have been top achievers, and they thought they'd get something where they were born with something special or a talent, and over and over again it was that they worked when other people didn't. They did extra jobs, extra effort somewhere, and they just, you know, through determination, like you said, 
Well, I think it takes, yeah, you have to be willing to go the extra mile. And most of the people I know who have succeeded did that. Uh, in my own case, I, f I learned early on that if you'll take a job that not a lot of people want uh, and you and succeed at it, uh, that helps. I, uh, Tell us about that. I remember well, that. I, I was the overnight disc jockey at WSM Radio in the, in the good old AM days on a clear channel station where we covered probably 38 states, went into Canada, Caribbean. But mo the staff at WSM, when I got the job, the people that worked there did not want to stay up all night. And uh, that was the last thing they wanted to do, was stay up all night and play records. I, so, and I just wanted a job. And I wanted to work there very badly. And so I took the job, and it, it opened, and, and opened because, well, it opened a lot, a lot of doors. And not only that, in those days, it was one of the few games in town for country music performers to promote their wares. They couldn't get any national television. Print media was not that great. And there weren't that many country stations. So. I had probably one of the most uh, powerful uh, radio programs to promote your new record. And so they all came. Right. And I got to meet them on their way in. But you did something that you, you did something that nobody else likes to do. I, for the viewers out there, you got to remember this. There's a statement I remember so clearly. They say successful people do the things that unsuccessful people don't like to do. Right. And what you did right there, and it's a lesson that you can take that and use to any kind of profession. Well, and. And you have to uh, you have to do some sacrificing along the way. Talk about sacrifice. Well, you, you, I've got to tell. Uh, I always tell young broadcasters, if they, if they if they bother to ask, that there are no good hours in broadcasting because to be effective, to be heard, you have to be on at uh, in morning drive time, and you have to get up about four o'clock, or you have to be on after afternoon drive and uh, you're going to miss your dinner because you're going to stay at the radio station during the dinner hour and you're going to be on the radio maybe from four to seven and uh and I, then i said <laughs> i i used to be an all-night disc jockey and those were not uh, desirable hours but there were a lot of people listening and uh so a lot of times uh, it's it, broadcasting is not a nine to five job and you also you work christmas you work new year's Especially, a lot of sacrifice, yeah, time, family, right? Yeah, especially when you're uh, a rookie. You know, when you get to some seniority, you get those days off. But when you're when you're working your way up, you work all those days, all those holidays. Yeah. And sacrifice, some people just don't like to make. They just feel it's, you know, I can do this, I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And what, what was, uh, before we go to break, uh, uh, something that really stuck with you, an interview uh, from one of the people that you've talked to? Well, I think I mentioned Ray Charles to you. Yeah, yeah. Now, Ray Charles has a chapter in my my new book, and yeah. what he mentioned to me that that he didn't go blind till he was about six years old. Yeah. I wrote about Ray Charles because Ray Charles started in country music, and I like to take credit for that. And uh, but what he wrote was the fact that he wrote about the fact when he became blind, his mother would not let him use that for a crutch. <laughs> And she told him she didn't think he ought to go out on the street and beg, that he should work, and that he should pursue his studies. And he learned to play about five instruments, mm -hmm. uh, including the piano. But Ray Charles is a, a living example of somebody who persevered. When we come back, we're going to talk about perseverance. We've got Ralph Emery, and we're going to talk about his book, A View from Nashville. Don't go away.
Welcome back. We're talking with Ralph Emery, country music expert, author of the book A View from Nashville. Uh, this is this has everything in it, really. I mean, this is a great book. It's got all the stories of all the people, past and present, you've interviewed. Uh, tell me, Dolly Parton, uh, Reva McIntyre, all these people you've interviewed. You see any? Is there any funny story that you have? Well, let me that? let me give you uh, let me give you a common denominator among three ladies. I'd like to hear that. There are three ladies that I have met who have in common the most determination I've ever met in my life. I've always said I would hate to be on the opposite side of an issue, opposite them. Barbara Mandrell, mm -hmm. Reba McIntyre, and Dolly Parton, all with the greatest determination to succeed that I've ever witnessed. Mm -hmm. uh, failure was not an option with a either one of those ladies. A great comment. That's from the Apollo 13. I believe in that so much. Uh, I met Dolly when she first came out of high school. Mm -hmm. She came to Nashville, uh, was introduced to me by some old friends, and they asked me if I would use her on my television show. I agreed, and uh, she was wonderful. When you say failure's not an option, how can we tell people that, you know, you, a lot of people have situations where they say, oh, that's, you know, everybody tells you you could be successful if you follow these traits, and a lot of people, there's no way, there's no uh, rules or you have to have that desire, that focus, that hunger. How did they find that? I don't know. I let me let me say that from a personal standpoint. Yes, I like that. In in working as a producer and performer, we have to deal with a lot of people, and we have to deal with a lot of decisions. And I tell my staff, if somebody tells you no, then find another way. Let's. Okay, you you won't do this for the for this reason. Okay, would you do it for this reason or for that reason? Or if if this person is impossible, I just break it off and goes to somebody else. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's too easy to say, oh, okay, and mm -hmm. and forget about it. Mm -hmm. uh, and in witnessing Barbara, Reba, and Dolly, Dolly Parton. Yeah. Uh, They've all been, I think, masters of their own destiny. They've sort of been in charge. Or when they could, they reached the point where they could be in charge, they took a, a hands-on approach. And they keep that the energy is unbelievable. Can we see a clip of uh, uh, some of the shows here? With sure. Bar Dolly Parton, and this will come up now. Wintertime, we always just washed with a, like a wash pan of water, and you'd, you'd wash down as far as possible. And then you'd wash up as far as possible. <laughs> and then when your brothers cleared the room, you'd wash possible. <laughs> <laughs> you made me tell <laughs> That was Dolly commenting on uh, what it, uh, bathing tips, and what it was like to bathe with uh, so many brothers <laughs> in, in a very small house in East Tennessee. How many, how many people in this family? I think she had 11 siblings. All right, all right. She's a great attitude. Talk about attitude. Why is that so important in life? Uh, well, you know, it's like the old uh, axiom of you can see the glass half full or half mm -hmm. empty. Uh, I think it's as just as easy to be positive uh, than to be negative. I don't like negative people. Why? Well, I mean, I, we they, always they, they sort of drain your energy. They do. And uh, I, I try to avoid negative people. If I find they're negative, I just try to diplomatically avoid them. Uh, I, I think it's just as easy to have a positive outlook. What they say, they say that most of the things you worry about never occur. Right, 50% in the past, 50% you can't have control of. Sure. And uh, I, I find that, that uh, thinking positively makes me feel better. And also, when you're negative and you're stressful, you know, that's when you get sick, that's when you get illness, and so there's a lot of, op you know, a lot of positive to positive thinking. But what about when adversity hits? You know, there's, there's an attitude of, like, getting focused and you, you feel good about something, but then adversity hits people and some people go do two different ways. How do you keep at an attitude of positive outlook in, 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 in a face of adversity? Well, I, I suppose you have to be able to see down the road a little bit. My mother once said to me, well, during a, That's a great point. Uh, during a very bad time in my life, my mother said to me, things never stay the same. They either go backwards or they go forward. 
and uh, it was kind of like uh, as to how you go is that sort of up to you mm. and I uh, now I realize that, that what we're saying to to someone out there who right now is despondent is probably very difficult to understand but you have to keep your goals in mind and you have to be determined to get there no matter what I want to talk about goals I want to talk about this is great more with Ralph Emery when we return. Don't go away. Welcome back. This is Diamonds in the Rough, and my guest is best-selling author Ralph Emery, whose latest book, A View from Nashville, is now in bookstores everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. Tell me something on the break. I, you know, it's funny. I wish we could... You should see the stuff we talk about on the break, <laughs> right? Uh, just talking about what you see... First of all, let's take a look at what, you, what happened to you, what the doctor said to you. I, oh, okay. You, well, I, I mentioned that I had a very black period in my life once, and I was very despondent and so forth. I went to the doctor, and I, I guess I went for a physical, and I found I had pneumonia, and, 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 and the mental stress had just brought me down so much, being despondent, that I was a wreck, and I wasn't eating properly. And anyway, the doctor says, so he starts ticking off the things that I cannot have. He said, okay, you can't have any more cigarettes, no booze, no sex, no fried foods. And finally, and I didn't mean this, okay, I, but I'm in a whimsical mood. I said, well, gee, Doc, I might as well just kill myself. <laughs> and he said, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll, that'll wake you up a little bit. Not having all that. But uh, he was very serious, and I, I was kind of lighthearted. It was a tough time. You said also that, uh, tell me some of the things you don't like to see in Nashville. Okay. In my first book, I commented on this. The, the thing that I witness in show business that distresses me the most is seeing some of my friends, some great entertainers who have been to the top of the mountain, mm -hmm. see their career end or their career go into decline. Mm -hmm. And I know that they're facing a lot of rejection and nobody likes rejection. I find that tougher to watch than to watch the climb of a young entertainer who is crawling and clawing his way to the top. And he's facing some rejection too. However, uh, he's never been to the top of the mountain, and I, he can't experience what the other fellow has. I know uh, Red Foley comes to mind. Red Foley was a great singer, 
They mm -hmm. used to call him the Bing Crosby of country music. He was number one at the uh, WLS National Barn Dance. He was the king of the Grand Ole Opry. Then he had his own ABC television show. And then one day it was over. He had hit records, mm -hmm. had some movies. One day it was over. And Red had to crawl into the bottle, and uh, it, it was very painful to watch all of that. Let me ask you this, because what you just said, and I'd like to show a, a clip in a moment of Reba McIntyre, but you said when people, what depresses you when people are at the mountaintop and they come down, how about this belief that once you think you're at the mountaintop, that's the worst thing to think, isn't it? Don't, isn't there well, always, I don't you know. could always be climbing? I once heard uh, he who knows and, and knows he knows is a leader, follow him. Uh, I think I think being on top of the mountain and, and realizing you're there and then learning to handle it, right. uh, learning to uh, learning to be a star, but with some class. I think Reba McIntyre does that beautifully. Mm -hmm. You know, you in a social. Can we see that? Are we able to see that? You have the roll. Can we roll that? Oh, this is the red dress. Dress you wore at the CMA Awards, 1993. Oh, you mean the red dress? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh-huh. What do you want to know about it? I wanted to know, <laughs> I wanted to know if this was a good idea that sort of got away from you. Well, you know, I got more press off that dress than if I'd won Entertainer of the Year. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Now, 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 there's Reba McIntyre. Now, how does she handle it? How does she, how does she handle it? Well... In social situations, and, and uh, we've spent many Christmases with Reba and Marvel, her husband, and Barbara Mandrell and Ken, and uh, we get together during the Christmas season out in Aspen. And uh, she she never talks about my hit records or I or I pack this auditorium or pack that auditorium or or any of her successes. She's just old Reba and. Uh, She'll ask you about, uh, more apt to ask you about what you've been doing than she is to ever brag about something she's achieved. And she's, right. she's become an icon. Mm -hmm. I like her a lot. Humbling. Humbling. Yeah, yeah. She, and she's just, uh, she's uh, a friends and neighbors type person. Nice. Uh, she's my kind of gal. When we come back, we'll have the tip of the day and final thoughts from Ralph Emery. Don't go away. Welcome back to Diamonds in the Rough, and here's the tip of the day. Joseph Sugarman once said, Not many people are willing to give failure a second opportunity. They fail once, and it's all over. The bitter pill of failure is often more than people can handle. If you're willing to, to consider failure as a blessing in disguise and bounce back, you've got the potential harnessing of one of the most powerful success forces. And I gotta tell you, nothing builds success like adversity and character. What are your comments? What's your definition of success? Well, may, I, may I borrow one from someone else? Sure. Uh, the Bushes are nice people. Uh, President Bush and Mrs. Bush were asked the same question. Uh, they said, uh, what is your greatest greatest achievement? And, she, and they said that our children still come home to us. Okay. And, mm -hmm. and uh, Very simple. I, I thought that was beautiful. Yeah. Ralph, this is beautiful you came on. I really appreciate Very, it coming you. all the way across the country. I really do. My pleasure. It's an honor. And if you'd, by the way, not to forget, Ralph Emery's book in bookstores now, View from Nashville, it's got everything, everything in it. 
View from Nashville. Don't forget, go to your bookstores now. <laughs> this is an infomercial. If you'd like more information on Diamonds in the Rough or have questions or comments about the show, please visit us on the website at www.cna.com. Thanks for joining us, and until next time, may your future be as bright as a diamond. Diamonds in the Rough has been brought to you by Custom Cleaner Home Dry Cleaning Kit and Valve Pack.